A few days ago, I built a next-gen Discord killer with Pocket Base and Svelte. It was an amazing experience for about three minutes, but then you guys completely destroyed it by spamming it with the most deranged comments I've ever seen on the internet. I initially started with a $5 Linux server. Its usage quickly shot up to 100%, so I resized it to four cores. That wasn't nearly enough juice either, and all four cores quickly became overwhelmed. And this is why we can't have nice things on this channel. The primary person to blame for all this is me, the developer. I built it with bad security practices by design just to see what would happen. It's fun to do bad things. Luckily, I live in America, so I can't go to jail for the horrible things you guys said, unlike other countries, but nobody wants to use an app that can be spammed by an unlimited amount of hate speech and profanity. This is a major problem when building any kind of app with user-generated data. In today's video, we'll break down all the problems my app had and talk about tools and techniques you can use to mitigate these issues in your own projects. The first problem is that people were using profanity, even though I told them not to. They didn't listen. Your language is offensive! I thought this might happen, so I implemented a pooping system where if a comment gets pooped on five times, it gets removed from the UI. I've seen this feature on other platforms like Odyssey where you can slime a comment to death, and I think it's a good idea, but it doesn't really work for a chat where the messages are moving at 100 miles an hour. It can also be hijacked by the bad guys to poop down all the comments that are actually good. So the next thing I did, which is really easy to implement, is just a bad word filter directly in the front end code. That means the app can't display words like f shit, c balls, and so on. You can also do filtering like this on the back end before that data ever goes to your database. But it's impossible to catch everything with regular expressions. The trolls will find ways to say bad words with alternative characters that bypass your filters. In modern times, though, artificial intelligence is starting to take over this job. Google developed Perspective API, which can detect if something is an insult or some variation of profanity. And they use tools like this at scale to keep the worst of the worst comments off of YouTube. Bad words are one problem, but an even bigger problem is when one person creates a script that automatically signs up new users, and they all start spamming the same horrible messages hundreds of times per second. In my chat app, all you need is a username and password to sign up, but that's not nearly enough friction for any real-world application. At the very least, you should require an email and have that user verify the email before they start posting messages. Pocketbase has a built-in email system that can handle this step for you. Then you can check the verified status and security rules for messages. That's a step in the right direction, but it's still not perfect. It's not hard to verify a burner or email. That's why nowadays you see almost all large-scale applications requiring multi-factor authentication, where a user also needs to verify a phone number with a text message or via an authenticator app to do anything important. This can also be faked, but it's way more difficult. Still though, someone could register with a burner phone and once again spam the chat with horrible messages. Another step you can take is to verify that the person on the front end is an actual human by implementing a CAPTCHA that in theory can only be solved by a real human. Google's reCAPTCHA is the most popular option, but cloud Cloudflare also now has a free alternative called Turnstile, and either option can help validate that requests are actually coming from a human inside your app. If you're a Firebase user, this is actually built into the platform with a tool called AppCheck, which has saved my ass multiple times. That can help with bots, but it's not going to stop some deranged lunatic or someone from the FBI's social media team from posting awful messages as a legitimate human being. Another step you'll want to take is to implement rate limiting on the back end. This prevents one single user from submitting too many requests within a given time period. A human can only do so much, and if you see an account breaking past that threshold, then you just shut it off for a while. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is problems scaling the infrastructure. Normally on this channel, we use serverless tools that can scale infinitely in the cloud without any regard for your wallet. This video was unique because we hosted the entirety of the back end, that includes the REST API, the admin dashboard, and the database itself on a $5 Linux server. In just one day, over 300,000 messages were created, and Pocketbase also recorded millions of logging records to go along with all the requests to the API. The Pocketbase creator left a really nice comment on that video explaining some improvements we could make, like increasing the open file limit to get the real-time connections to scale better. Also keep in mind that Pocketbase is a very early stage project that hasn't even hit 1.0 yet. Overall, I'm extremely impressed at how it scaled with its limited resources and thousands of real-time connections. The front-end app got really laggy just due to the fire hose of messages, and the admin app also froze up a couple of times when I tried to delete some of the worst users and messages, but the admin dashboard dashboard never crashed completely, and I could always access the data there. Most importantly, I could always update the rules to globally disable new message creation. I did that for about an hour, so I could go have a nice healthy and relaxing lunch at Arby's. I left a message from the official Fireship account, explaining that the chat had been disabled due to extreme toxicity. As I sat down and began to enjoy my roast beef sandwich and curly fries, I went in to double check the chat, and found that Toshi Michi1724 found an exploit to overwrite my message in addition to any other user in the chat. This is my fault for 
not defining robust security rules, but all I could do was sit there and cry while eating my strawberries and cream fried pie, now available for a limited time at participating restaurants. Now, even though you guys were able to overwhelm and totally wreck the app, I don't feel ashamed or humiliated for this great dishonor I have brought upon the art of programming. Ultimately, moderating and controlling spam on a massive chat app is a nearly impossible task. Even Discord struggles with it to this day. We've had to jump through all kinds of hoops to prevent raids and spam on our Discord server. If you're crazy enough to build your own massive public chat room, all I can say is good luck and may God be with you. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.